Hi friends, it's Miss Sammy here and welcome to chapel. Hey, let's get started by saying good morning to God. Get your prayer hands and let's sing together. Good morning God, this is your day. I am your child, so job friends and I hope that you're singing with a big strong voice God loves to hear us sing okay now let's get ready for chapel make sure that you have listening ears watching eyes and a quiet mouth let's make sure that our hands are folded safe and sitting in front of us on our laps. Also, let's make sure we're sitting crisscross applesauce so we have safe hands and safe feet. Remember, we're doing this because chapel is God's holy time and it belongs to God. We want to show God our love and our respect and we want to give him honor. So, now we're ready to get our altar ready. First thing we're going to do, let's light our candle. As I light this candle, can you get your light out? Awesome. Okay, let's say this together. We light this candle to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. Okay. The next thing we're getting out is our cross. Do you know how to make cross fingers? Very good. The cross reminds us that Jesus is God's Son. Let's say this part together. Jesus died on the cross to forgive us of our sins. Good job, friends. Now, the last thing we need to get our altar ready for worship is the Bible. Can you make Bible hands for me? Good job. What do we say about the Bible? Let's say this together. It's God's story. Perfect. Now, we know that the Bible is the holy word of God, and it is what God gives us to shine a light in our lives so we know how to follow him, and we know what to do, and we know where to go. So let's open our Bibles to our Bible verse for the month. It comes from Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. If you'll notice, this Bible verse comes towards the back of my Bible. Philippians 4, verse 13. It says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Let's say this Bible verse together because this is something we want to learn and say to ourselves always. It's always good to plant God's word in our hearts. So let's do it together. Begin by pointing to yourself. I can do all things through him, that's God, that's Jesus, who gives me strength. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Let's do it again, all together. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Way to go, friends. Okay, this Bible verse goes with our fruit of the Spirit that we're going to be learning about this month. What do you think it is? Let's look at our fruit of the Spirit tree. Oh, here we go. Well, we have a fruit growing on our fruit of the Spirit tree, and I want you to look at this. All right, this is a picture of someone that has a bubble in their mouth like this. And it's also a picture of a duck, and that is a duck tail. So, it says self-control. This is the fruit of the Spirit called self-control. And the way we remember it is we're going to have a bubble in duck tails. Let's try that together right now. Here's my bubble, <gasps> and here's my duck tail. Can you see? Do you see it? 
okay, here we go. Show me self-control. <gasps> That's right. Self-control means that instead of being all wild and crazy and loud, I'm going to use self-control and I'm going to say, okay, I need all my words to stay in my mouth. <gasps> and instead of having crazy wild hands, I need to use self-control and I'm going to have duck tails so that when I walk around my school, I'm going to be quiet and safe. <gasps> Very good. And when I sit in my class, I'm going to have a quiet bubble. I'm going to have safe hands in my lap. I'm going to sit crisscross applesauce and use self-control so that I don't miss anything because we're learning good, important stuff. In fact, we're getting ready to learn some good, important stuff in chapel. So have your listening ears on. But also, we're going to sing songs because it's time for us to water the fruit of the spirit of self-control. So when we sing, we're going to sing with a big, strong voice. And when we're listening, we're going to listen with quiet ears, watching eyes, and a quiet mouth. So let's get ready to grow some self-control, which is our fruit of the spirit for this month. I love you, friends. I'll see you soon. Hi friends, Miss Sammy here, and I'm so excited to see you because we are going to sing a song, Oh, Be Careful Little Eyes What You See. Get ready and let's sing together. to tell you a story today about a very special Bible hero. This is someone that God tells us about in the Bible. His name is Daniel. Okay, can you say hi to Daniel? Hi Daniel, how are you? Now Daniel had three very special friends. I want to introduce you to them. This is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they are very special friends with Daniel. Now, Daniel and his friends lived in Israel. And can I tell you some bad news? Well, the Israelites were living in Israel. La, 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 when all of a sudden, a king from Babylon came in and took over. <gasps> there was a big battle and the king of Babylon won. Oh, no. His name was... Nebuchadnezzar, it was, yeah. 
this is Nebuchadnezzar. He is not a happy guy. He can be very grumpy sometimes. But King Nebuchadnezzar came in and he rounded up a whole bunch of like the very strong and smart young men of Israel and he took them all the way to Babylon because he wanted them to work for him. He's like, I want you to work for me and I'm going to put you in a very special training program for three years. You're going to work for me, then you're going to graduate, and then you're going to work in my palace, in my castle, my palace. Okay? Okay, so, guess who was among those young men that Nebuchadnezzar took away? He was Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and here they go. And King Nebuchadnezzar took them all away to live in his, in his palace. Yeah, right in the castle. Now, while they were there, the king said, listen, you guys are going to eat from my table. I'm going to give you my special royal food. That's good, right? Yay! That's right. Uh-oh. I got to tell you something. When Daniel saw the food that the king was going to give him, he's like, oh, no, I can't eat that. God does not want us to eat that. I know what God wants us to eat, and that is not it. It's kind of like if the king said, listen, I want you to drink soda all the time for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then I want you to eat candy bars all the time. Like M&Ms for breakfast, almond joy for lunch, and Milky Way or Snickers, Milky Way. This is, this is a Milky Way and that was for dinner. And all of the king's food was bad for them. And, there, and Daniel, Daniel knew, he was like, Oh no, I can't eat that food. That goes against God's God's laws and, and God's guidelines for living a good, healthy, holy life. Okay, what can I do? Okay, well, Daniel had an idea. So he went to the palace guard. And Daniel said to the palace guard, he's like, hey, could you help me? Can, instead of eating all the king's food, can maybe my friends and I, can we just eat vegetables? Can we drink water? Well, you know, here, here's some good vegetables. Yeah. Green peppers, green peppers, onions, onions. How about pot potatoes? And then look at water. Let's drink water. Water is good for you. Well, do you know do you know what the palace guard said? The master of the palace he said, oh, I can't let you do that. I like you, Daniel. I cannot let you do that because if I let you eat that stuff and the king sees that you are weak and puny, and then guess what? I'm gonna get in trouble and uh, the king will kill me. So Daniel said, hey, listen, give us a test for 10, 10, 10 days. Let us eat vegetables, let us drink water, and at the 10 days, just see how we do. Okay, that's a good idea. So for 10 days, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. At the end of 10 days, the palace, the palace master came and he said, hey, how are you doing? And then guess what? Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when the palace master came to them, he found that they were faster than everybody else. He found that they were stronger than everybody else. And he found that smarter than everybody else. He said, Daniel, you can do what you want, eat what you want, because you are doing good. So that's exactly what happened. For three years, Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach, they obeyed God, and they only ate the food that they knew God wanted them to eat. At the end of three years, guess what? When they met with King Nebuchadnezzar, he found that they were faster, stronger, smarter, Everybody else, nobody else could compare with them. And he gave them awesome jobs working for him. 
in the palace. And then, not only that, he found they were cute. They were smarter than all the people already working for him. And he gave them good jobs. Way to go, Daniel. So proud. Hey, so proud of you guys. You have made a difference and you stood up for what you believed in. You used self-control to do what is right and good and true. Thank you guys. Hey, I'll talk to you later. Next time we're going to hear another story about Daniel and how he trusted in God and used self-control. Thanks friends, bye. Hi friends, Miss Sammy here and we're going to sing about the fruit of the spirit because the fruit of the spirit's not an apple. The fruit of the Spirit's not an apple. The fruit of the Spirit's not an apple. If you want to be an apple, then you might as well bear it. You can't be fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How about bananas? Anybody in here like bananas? I like bananas. The fruit of the Spirit's not bananas. The fruit of the Spirit's not bananas. If you want to be a banana, then you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Okay, what's another fruit? Um, oranges! They're good for you too. The fruit of the Spirit's not oranges. The fruit of the Spirit's not oranges. If you want to be an orange, then you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Thank you so much.